I'm going to welcome the, uh, up to uh, the presentation podium, uh, John Reiner, our own director of programming. And he's going to talk to us about, funny thing, how to do DMR, both out of repeater, and how we can leverage that in a fashion that uh, is very intriguing. So John, take it away. All right, hopefully I don't confuse everybody tonight, <laughs> because uh, um, basically I want to talk about all the different methods uh, without a repeater. WLET has been down. Uh, so really the only way to get on the DMR uh, in recent months until MARA uh, put their repeater up uh, was, was through some of these methods and uh, some of you might not have, most of you have heard of at least some of these methods, uh, but hopefully you'll see something new, uh, something different and uh, so here we go. Advantages of a repeater, uh, generally speaking, speaking, the transceiver has more power. Generally speaking, the antenna is usually higher above ground, and most repeater sites have at least one method of backup power in the event of a power failure. There are limitations, however. Cost, as we just uh, were talking about, they can be expensive. And DMR does offer two time slots, which is you can carry on two conversations at the same time, and that's better than an analog, but at the same time, uh, you run the risk if other people are wanting to talk on other talk groups, if they're dynamically linked, you can get bumped off those time slots. So you can be in the middle of talking. I uh, had this happen when I was calling in for the National Weather Service one time. We kept getting bumped off because people were trying to link uh, to the wrong time slot for what they were trying to do. And that could be intentional or accidental if they don't know what they're doing, you know, when they set up their radio. So, so what choices do you have? Droid Star. How many people have heard of Droid Star? A few? Okay. Uh, so the pros are it's free. And there are versions that work with Android and iPhone. It works over Wi-Fi or cellular data. The cons being it can be finicky to set up and get working right. There is a vocoder plugin that you have to have for Droid Star. And there's all kinds of conflicting information if you Google this. And I'm just going to tell you where I made my mistake was that I found the plugin but I downloaded it to my phone and actually in the section I should have put the URL to that plugin and it gave me fits. But I've had it set up for gosh, a couple of years now and it works great. So what I'm going to do here, let's see if I can, I have, everybody familiar with Samsung Dex? Yeah. May the live demo smile upon you. <laughs> Let's see here. So right now, let me see if I can turn the volume up. Let's see if anybody answers. Somebody just came on. Basically, when you launch this app, the first thing that you're going to do after you've got it set up and working is up here, there'll be a connect button. You hit connect. Here's where you select your talk group. And it's really that simple. We'll wait and see if somebody else. Is. If anyone has a DMR radio and wants to get on talk group 91 real quick. Yep, worldwide. I've also got my hotspot in here tuned to this, and uh, we were, I was seeing traffic from Japan all over the earlier, so. We'll give it just a second here. I was too slow on the volume. There was, there was somebody talking when I first hopped on it. Also, on your phone, you know, it just uses your phone's mic. It works a lot like Echo Link. And down here's your transmit buttons. So you would just hold that down with your thumb, talk, and then go. It's Droid Star is the name of it. You've got to register with the DMR. 
Yes, uh, in the settings you have to put your uh, radio ID and your, your DMR ID. And you have to select, uh, actually, let me see here. I can show you some of the settings here. Um, let me see where it has that in here. And this will work with D Star as well, I believe. Yeah, here's my DMR ID right there. Oh, there was something. J4AXW. Where were they from? So, again, this is free. You don't have to buy a radio, you can put it right on your phone. So, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect that. Do what? That was a question that was over here. So is that similar to or analogous to potentially echoing? Absolutely. It works a lot like echoing. Is there a lot of traffic on it? Echoing. It depends on the uh, talk group that you're using. So that's why I had it selected to 91. That's worldwide. And uh, there's almost always traffic on that uh, top group. So, the next thing that I'm going to talk about, well, <laughs> now the technical gods aren't with me. Let's see here. Blue DB. Anybody heard of this? How many people use Blue DB? I really like Blue DB. You do have to have a hardware encoder for it. Looks like a little USB stick. These cost about 120 bucks. Um, Northwest Digital Products is where I bought this one. Uh, they do have them in stock right now. They don't always. I've, I've checked a few times when I've done demonstrations for Joe's tech class, and uh, they've not always been in stock. One of the really cool things is this bad boy will do DMR, D-Star, and Fusion. So, uh, and one of the features that I like, uh, especially when I'm calling nets, is that over here, I know that's kind of blurry, but it says last heard. It's got a, you've got a list of everybody that had talked. So if you're calling a dead and you didn't quite catch somebody's call sign, you've got it right there. Amazing. So, so let me plug this in here. So this is what the screen looks like. And in here are all your settings. And this does a few little quirks. And of course, I'm going to have to drag the screen over. So there we go. Um, you've got your, your call sign up here. And what the COM port is, you can get that through uh, your device manager. Is that special drivers? No, no drivers. Um, or. Then you still have to have your DMR ID and DMR type. Well, there's my master password. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> and I uh, guess I better change that. Uh, one of the quirks, though, is that you have to put in a uh, fusion reflector down here, or it will not save your settings for some reason. It's just a little bug in it, so uh, be cautious with that. 
and uh, so that is that. So if you want to use the program, first off, to turn it on, you hit serial, and you'll see the firmware uh, come up here. Then you select which mode you want to use. So if I want to select DMR, and you can see down here, logged into DMR. I think he's had a few too many glasses of wine tonight. <laughs> now, if I wanted to talk, I would click right here. That slider would go over there, and then you would be transmitting. And as you can see, people that are connecting right here. So I've got a list. John, thank you. Have a good day. Good night. Call us later. W5 DMJ. Okay, send me to it. Mark Green. All right. Any questions about that? The software is free, the USB sticks not. Like I said, it'll work with D-Star, it'll work with Fusion. Um, one thing that you want to do periodically is go in here and update your, your host. And if you update the call database, that way the name will show up uh, with the DMR ID. If you don't update that regularly, it won't show up. It will just show the radio ID. All right, Pi-Star. Problem? Yes. I have one question, if it's all right. Sure. My Blue DV stopped working, and I think you said that it might be a Brandmeister thing. That now you require the security. Thing. Yeah, that's where you have to uh, set up security. You do it through Self Care, the Brandmeister website, and so you set up a, uh, a, a password, and then you put it in there. And then also, if you go to settings and it doesn't save, it's because there's not a uh, fusion reflector selected, even if, whether you use fusion or not. So, Thank all right, Pi Star. How many people in here have a Pi Star? <laughs> Probably the most popular. It's just a hot spot. Um, low cost, very low cost. One of the really cool advantages of these are that because you're only transmitting to that little device right there, you don't need your radio on high power. So you can put it on low power, save your battery life, and talk a lot longer without having to recharge your battery. Uh, they can access DMR, D-Star, Fusion. They run on the Raspberry Pi platform. Uh, years ago, they were really cheap. They went up unbelievable for a while, but they are starting to come back down and be a little reasonable. Highly portable. I know people that will connect them to their cell phone hotspot, like mine is right now, and drive all over town talking on them. So uh, generally, they're pretty easy to configure. Uh, you can buy them ready-made or assemble yourself. Um, this one was a ready-made one. Uh, and the other cool thing is there's a dashboard. So much like the last heard on Blue DB, uh, with the dashboard, you can see who's calling, it'll give you uh, like an error rate, uh, so you can tell whether, you know, if, if, if it gets, uh, uh, the timing gets off too much or something, uh, they will they will have an error rate, it'll be harder to hear, or uh, they'll break up more. Uh, as I mentioned, connect to, uh, to Hotspot for connectivity, and there's generally a lot of support available for these. So that's a picture of the one right here that I have. You can see that earlier today, somebody from China was on there. Always good to have the host country that made the thing show up on I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, here's the dashboard I was talking about. So as you can see, it lists you know the date and time and uh, all the call signs, 
what talk group they were on, what time slot, and then you can see the loss over here. And this BER, uh, if that gets above about 1%, you always want to see that below 1%. And there's some things that you can do on your hotspot uh, to tweak that. You can adjust the offset just a little bit. Um, there's, if, if you Google it, there's tons of instructions on how to set that. So, um, let's see. See if anybody comes across the hotspot here in a minute. So, what kind of radio is this? Anybody have one of these? That's not a UV 5R. It is called a DM 5R. We paid about fifty dollars for this on Amazon. I don't think they make them anymore. <laughs> but it's actually quite handy. So. Paying for BDH testing. So it did just come across the hotspot. Let's see if anybody comes back. Apparently nobody wants to talk. But that's how it works. It must be you. Yeah. <laughs> if we were YouTube Live, I would probably think it was. They're like, no, I'm not talking to him. Okay, Shark RF Open Spot. The creme de la creme, the Cadillac of hot spots. How many people have one of those? So, I envy you. <laughs> so, uh, widely considered the best hot spot. Built-in rechargeable battery, so you don't have to worry about an external battery pack or a USB connection to keep the thing powered. Uh, again, same thing, you can lose, use low power on your HT for longer battery life. It does DMR, D-Star Fusion. Oh, I was wrong. It's not Raspberry Pi platform. Highly portable, easy to configure. They've got their own dashboard. And uh, just like the Pi Star, you can connect to your mobile device for connectivity. And from what I've heard, there's a lot of support available for these. Um, they are pricier than the Pi Stars. Um, I believe the Pros run at what, about 300 The Pro 4? Yeah, so, uh, but you get three modes out of it. Battery, and, and I've seen where you can uh, replace the battery fairly easily if it goes bad as well, so you don't have to replace the whole hotspot. That's a picture of their dashboard. Does that look accurate? Yeah. So, Dan, did you want to do a quick dem demonstration? Yeah, this is. My setup, I use a I use a straight call hot spot a lot just because it works really well. But see the radio on. What I like about this is audio feedback. bit ago I, I put it on a charger but I heard it say battery 14%. So it has and when you if you're out somewhere and you uh, you lose your Wi-Fi it'll tell you it's disconnected. But it AA40 F testing apparently. So I'm on AA40 F testing apparently. So I'm connected to Brainmeister. I drove all the way to Dayton, Jack and Way on it. Worked great. But it is a little bit more pricey than Pi Star, but I like it. Batteries built in. It's probably about ten hours out. Okay, so about ten hours of battery life. So 
pretty pricey. What I'm about to show you, though, beats all that in the way of price. I'm not going to say the best way of quality, but it does beat everything in price. Um, DMR OIP. DMR over IP. Uh, this is the R Finder B1. No code plug needed. That's no lie. You can literally just put whatever you want, what pop group, and you're good to go. It's also got a repeater directory uh, built into the device. Uh, works as a mobile device, so it's also a cell phone. It can access Echolink, Zillow, uh, Zillo, etc. It has USB-C charging, which is a plus. It's got two PTs on the side, so this one activates the RF module. This one's for uh, like Echolink or um, Zello, you know, other applications. It's expensive. I ain't going to lie, it's about $1,000. It's constantly being updated, and for the price, I feel like it's a little glitchy at times. Um, but I'm also not 100% sure. I didn't add it to my cell phone plan. I went to Amazon and got a US Connect plan for like $6 a year or something. And it's got unlimited talk and text. Um, it's got like a gig of data per month. And sometimes I wonder if it's the cellular connection that's the problem or when I'm on Wi-Fi. Generally when I'm on Wi-Fi, it seems to work pretty good. So let's see if anybody's on. But right now I'm on uh, DMR over IP. Let's see if anybody's on here. Somebody was on here a few minutes ago. As soon as I get through talking, then uh, I'm sure they'll uh, come on here. But it, it's really cool. Um, I, I like the concept of it. Um, you know, the idea of having a cell phone or a radio and everything all in one, one device. But uh, all right. So that's that. And that is really all I have. Um, so that's five different methods of accessing DMR if a repeater is not available. So, um, any questions? Um, explain to everybody about the DMR number. Oh, the ID? Uh, in order to access DMR, you have to have a unique ID, and you have to have a call sign to register for that ID. And you basically go to radioid.net and uh, Put in your call sign and, and request the ID, and they will give you that ID. So. I think you might even have to upload a copy of this. Yeah, it's been so long since I've done it, I don't remember if I had to upload my license or. Okay, so you got to upload a, a PDF of your FCC license. All right. That's all I have. Well, John? Thank you, John. We appreciate that. And while we take a second, while we take a second to turn the tables, uh, I want to take a quick second for a shameless plug in. You got the QR code scattered around on the tables. Take an opportunity, let us know what you think. Go out the signal report and let us uh, get some feedback on the program and the activities.